And number one question I get is how I do everything, all the time, all at once, and still get enough sleep, still eat enough food, still get all of my work done, and still have some kind of personal life and family life without losing my mind while keeping an insane amount of energy at all times. Today, I wanna actually unlock this for you. I wanna show you how to biohack your life across sleeping, eating, and working for success and for efficiency with your time so you can live your life like a CEO. Let's go. Let's start with sleep. It's what we do the most, more than how much you work, more than how much time you spend in the gym, more than how much time you spend eating. We sleep a significant amount of our lives. And I get a lot of flack for sleep. I've made some TikToks, some reels, some comments on Million Dollar Listing. I've talked about sleeping less, a lot. And I just wanna clear this up, okay? It is important to get a healthy amount of sleep for you. What I learned a long time ago is everyone needs something different. I know people who need 4,000 calories of food a day. I know people who go on 72 hour fasts. I also know people who can do four hours of sleep a night and they're totally fine. And I also know people who sleep eight to 10 hours a night because that is quote unquote what they need. I'm a big believer that you can train the machine that is your body to do whatever you need it to do. You've probably had moments in your life where you've been able to wake up early and you've had moments in your life where you hate mornings. Maybe that's you right now. So what amount of sleep should you be getting? You talk to doctors, they're gonna say you should get at minimum seven hours, but if you can get eight hours of quality sleep, then you will be good to go. I think that's great. My daughter's four. She gets 10 to 12 hours of sleep a night because that is what she needs. And she's just a better kid. If she doesn't sleep, it's bad for all of us. I've learned that I can operate incredibly efficiently on six hours of sleep. The minimum, minimum, minimum amount of sleep that I need to be able to survive during a full work day is about four hours. On really, really busy weeks, I will buy back time from sleep to be more productive during the day. People are gonna say, okay, but those productive hours, you're not gonna get anything done. I actually call bullshit on that. My life is what I make of it. If I need two more hours of work to get what I need done that day, even if I'm a little bit more tired, I'd rather get 50% of the work done at that productivity level than 0% of it done because I needed to get a certain amount of sleep because someone told me I needed that or I'm just tired. And I know people also say that making up sleep is totally bullshit, but I've been doing it for like 20 years and it works for me. Let's look at last night, for example. I wear a whoop. What's up, whoop? Last night I went to bed pretty early because I'm a little bit jet lagged coming back from Greece. My whoop says I fell asleep at 8.40. Don't judge me, okay? And I woke up at 3.30. I actually, this morning, was super productive. I started doing emails and doing work between 4 and 5.15 a.m. And I worked out from 5.30 to 7.10 or so this morning. And it's all right here and I can see it. Now, that's a lot of sleep. To go to bed before 9 p.m., I don't care what time you wake up, that's early. For sleep, you gotta figure out what works best for yourself and make that a priority. So that's enough on sleep, I think you get it. So first for me is working out. I have to work out every day. If it's six days a week, depending on travel, schedule, etc. I need to generate sweat every single day. I used to be a nighttime workout person. I used to work out at night. I remember like I would go to the gym and I'd be the one who was closing it up. That's how I worked. That's how I operated. I'd have a protein shake at night at like 11 p.m. and I'd pass out and I think that was great for my body. I did that all through college. First four years, I think, of being in New York City until I got a job and then realized my work day doesn't end so that I can go to the gym at night. So I need to buy back time to make sure that I can work out when it doesn't interfere with my main priorities. So my number one goal in life is to build an amazing company, to do great work and to have amazing efficiency with my time. I know early morning people are gonna be emailing me less, calling me a lot less, if at all, and my work responsibilities between four and 7 a.m., let's say, are not that crazy. And so if my expectations are low, that seems like a great time to have me time. I have in my head already planned out what workout I'm gonna do every day this week. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are conventional bodybuilding, weightlifting, heavy weights. Before the workout, I did 20 minutes of high intensity interval training where I did the treadmill, the assault bike, and the ski erg 
for 10 calories a piece as fast as I possibly could. I mix that up with 25 push-ups, 100 crunches, sit-ups, whatever you're gonna do, and as many pull-ups as I could do, and I rinse and repeat as many times as I can for 20 minutes to spike my heart rate. And then I did slow, heavy weights across chest, middle, upper, and lower, and shoulders. On Wednesday, I'm gonna do legs, heavy. This week, Thursday, Friday, I'm then gonna do high reps, full body. Saturday, I'm gonna do a class, something fun, something different. Right, I'll do an F45 class, maybe I'll do a rumbo class, maybe I'll go do CrossFit because Saturdays at CrossFit are just the fucking worst. Where I'm not really focused on weight, I'm just focused on overall athletic ability. Sunday, because I work on Sundays, I wake up and I'm gonna do probably a 60 minute Peloton ride and core. So that is my week for working out. But that doesn't mean anything if I don't have the right amount of sleep for me and then the right amount of food. So let's get to food. I intermittent fast, not because it's trendy. I've been intermittent fasting for five years. I do it because it gives me energy. And I realized a long time ago that I don't need to eat the way people tell me to eat. I don't need to have a balanced breakfast. I don't need to have three meals a day. I don't need to have a huge dinner late at night. Five years ago, I was tired. I was working out all the time. I was working all the time, but I was just always exhausted. And I was like, "This, I must need to sleep more. I slept more, I was more tired. Maybe I need to do a different type of workout. I was more tired. But then there's only one thing I need to change. It's probably the fuel that I'm putting into my body, the type of fuel and how I'm fueling. If you put too much fuel into your body, it's gonna overflow. But your body's gonna say, I don't really need it. Holy God, you, you just gave me all this food two hours ago. Okay, put it over here for safekeeping. Put it over here for safekeeping. And I'm not a scientist, I'm not a doctor, and I'm not gonna go into all of the reasons why this works. And I don't think you're following me for that reason anyway. I don't think that's why you're even watching this video. But here's how I think about my food this week. I keep a regimented schedule, but I also switch it up so I don't go crazy. But this week, I'm fully intermittent fasting, like I always do but I switched up the schedule. Because I'm doing heavy weights Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm actually eating the first six hours of the day. So I'm eating this week from 8.30 a.m. to 1.30 p.m. and then I'm stopping because by then I've had all of my calories, I've had all the food, all the protein that I need. My body is in repair mode from the workout that I had this morning. It's fully energized because I've now stacked my stomach and my digestive system and I don't need any more food for the rest of the day. But then on Thursday, I'm gonna switch it up. Thursday, because I go to high rep day, right? Basically one big hit workout. I'm gonna fully fast on Thursday. One, because I can. Two, because I think it gives me a good reset and I won't need as much protein on that day. So I'll just fast that day. And then I'll pick food back up again on Friday, Saturday and Sunday, when I'll eat the second half of the day. When I started intermittent fasting, I was around 200 pounds. Body fat percentage under 10%. And that doesn't change. If I don't eat anything or I eat way too much, for me, my body kind of operates in that area. What changes for me is energy levels and then body fat percentage. If I eat way too many complex carbs or refined sugars, my body fat is gonna go up and my body's then gonna eat muscle because it's gonna want protein that I'm not giving it because I'm just giving it carbs. I love pudding and ice cream and cake and all that stuff. It's like my one vice. That's why I also have an app called Day Since where I can track how many days since I've had refined sugar or alcohol and that's my way of winning, right? Because I've got to game my system, game the machine. You should not fast if it's not right for you. Do not cut this up and make me seem like some psycho. I think you should try whatever works best for you and you should track it. One of the best ways that I really started biohacking my life to have the most efficient use of my thousand minutes a day was really understanding what I did all day. Doing a time diary. When you've got screen time, you understand how much time are you spending on TikTok? How much time are you spending on YouTube? How much time are you spending improving yourself or just passing the minutes because it's easier to do that than actually take control of your life. And then my work, but you know I am very, very diligent and calendar based. So I've got meetings that are 15 minutes at a time. No meeting unless it's super, super important needs to be hours and hours and hours. Things can be 15 minutes and you know what it does? It forces everybody to be efficient. You know how many meetings I've sat in that are an hour where really the meat of the meeting was 10 to 15 minutes long? 
And it was always at the end when people realize, oh shit, the meeting's almost over. If you take one piece of advice about how to structure your day, it's to be action oriented, not task oriented. How can we be actionable in every meeting, every conversation, everything that you do during the day? And how are you focused on that taking you forward versus talking and or arguing and or discussing non-stop tasks? And then you wanna surround yourself with people who are better than you. It's something that took me forever to learn. I thought that I need to have people who work for me when I started the company. And that is a painful lesson to learn. I work for everybody here. It is my job to provide the mission and the leadership and great leaders lift. And that's my goal. I've been biohacking my life for productivity, efficiency, money-making ability for a long time. When I started taking my life seriously, really, which was, I guess, when I was 23 and I moved to New York and I had no money, it was like, bug, I gotta figure something out. This is your machine, just like your car. If you take care of it, it'll take you from A to Z really, really fast and really comfortably. If you don't take care of it, don't give it the right fuel, you don't clean it, you don't wash it, you don't store it, you don't check the battery, it's gonna fucking break down on you when you least expect it. Maybe you're not in New York City, maybe you're not gonna be selling apartments for hundreds of millions of dollars, maybe you're not building your own company, but maybe you wanna build something great for yourself. And if anything I do with my life, with how I sleep, work out, eat, and work, and balance my time is helpful for you, then just copy it, do it. And let me know in the comments if this is at all helpful. Otherwise, you know how many calls I could be making right now? So I hope any of this was helpful. If you like this, please give this video a like, subscribe if you haven't, let me know in the comments what your honest feedback is. I'm not doing this for my health. I wanted to show you how to eat, sleep, and work like a CEO. How to really biohack your life like somebody who has been doing it for a long time because if this video saves you any time in figuring things out for yourself, then that's what this is here for. That's awesome. Thank you so much for watching more Ryan Serhan. I love you all. Big things coming for the rest of the year. Like, subscribe, send this to your friends and family. This has been way more than 15 minutes. Fuck, I have to go back to work.